What's up, guys? This is Sean from the Lineup Logic NBA DFS podcast. Want to bring you guys a few more things about, um, you know, toolkit uh, research tools that you can use, um, you know, to try and do some of your own research as you go through, um, as you go through through your slate um, and you go through your lineup creation. Cur- uh, excuse me, creation. So. Um, you know, over here at Rido Grinders, they have a ton of tools, and there's some that are more obvious than others. I want to go through some of the other not so obvious tools. Um, obviously, projections, the lineup builder, really nice optimizer. They do a nice job with that. The on off tool, I just did an on off video. So if you haven't looked into that, that's one way to look at on offs. Um, but then, you know, their article section, media, but some of the other tools down here, people don't really dive into too much. Um, one thing I really like is the market watch tool. And unfortunately, the market watch tool doesn't have any salaries in it right now because we don't have a game. Um, but this is where you can find out whose salaries are rising and falling. And I talk about price watching. This is a great way to say, oh, hey, his price just went way down. I wonder why. Is he worth rostering? Um, you know, or his price is way up recently. Maybe that's something to pay attention to. So definitely a cool, cool thing there. The market watch. I like that quite a bit. The other tool that I really like though, is this offense versus defense tool. This is really a huge tool for me because at the basic level, what you're going to get is you got the basics. Okay. And it has last Thursday's slate on here. So it's kind of nice. We only have to worry about two games. Clearly we can see that Washington playing Indiana. Indiana is the team that's going to allow the most points right now. Okay. They're allowing, um, you know, they're allowing a 46% shooting rate. They're allowing a ton of points per game. However, if we wanted to be able to target a three point shooting situation, we know we would want a Boston t- shooting against Chicago is a really nice situation. So I'm going to say to myself, wow, does this mean I need to fire up some Isaiah Thomas? Isaiah Thomas also had a big scoring night that night. So interesting there. But what I really like is the ability to break down some more specifics. Pace is so important. And when you're sorting these games, what you want to do is you want to target the high pace versus the low pace games. Okay. Now on a two game slate, it doesn't matter. But when you have 14 games, you can basically look at the top you know, five games here in pace when you sort by pace and you can say, wow, this team is going to be in a pace up game. This is going to be a pace. And what they do is, is they basically combine the, the, the pace of the both teams. Okay. They combine the pace of both teams to figure out what the average pace of the game is going to be. Now, what's interesting, however, is that you will also see a combination of points per game, offensive rating versus points allowed, etc. And what Roto Grinders does for you is create an average rating for that team for that game. Meaning, is this a really good matchup for them? If you sort by the average rating, what you're going to see is, is that Boston has an excellent situation and that Washington has an excellent situation. It makes sense. They're the better teams going up against inferior teams. But when you have, again, you have a lot of games, what it's going to help you do is understand who's in the best situation, giving points allowed, pace, all those things combined. A team's defensive rating, who's going to be in a situation that's advantageous to um, advantageous to fantasy pur- for fantasy purposes. Then... What's really nice is when you want to expand on DVP, you want a deeper understanding of DVP. Let's say I like Isaiah Thomas, but I want to understand why I should like Isaiah Thomas. I can go to the click on this guards button and I can look and see what did the Boston guards have in store with the Chicago Chicago backcourt. Well, the Chicago backcourt seems to be pretty stingy in points allowed and assists in steals and blocks defensively. You know, not a great situation for Isaiah, but this is interesting to me. We know he's a lights-out three-point shooter, and they allow a lot of three-pointers. However, maybe I'm comparing him to John Wall, and if I look at this, I'm seeing that John Wall's situation against Indiana right here is a little bit more advantageous. They're just allowing more points to the guard position. They're um, allowing more assists. They're allowing more steals. They're allowing more a higher field goal percentage. 
Um, so it's just kind of an interesting way to decipher how you want to break down your DVP matchups. The same thing goes for forwards. And one of the things that I really like to do here with forwards specifically is determine, you know, is there a way that I can leverage rebounds? Okay, because if my forwards, if my power forwards, if my centers, if they're not scoring, then I want them in the double digits and rebounds, right? I want them approaching double digits and rebounds. I can clearly see that the best situation for rebounding forwards right now is the Wizards against the Pacers. So Wizards forwards. So I'm thinking to myself, Markeith Morris, Otto Porter. Both of them went off in that game, right? You know, and the the shooting percentage is excellent for those. That's actually the best shooting percentage. So I can better understand how what is this matchup going to look like for Markeith Morris and Otto Porter. Um, whereas I can understand, you know, if I'm looking at the Boston front court, maybe I don't really want to play uh, an Amir Johnson against Taj Gibson because he's a great rebounder. You know, um, maybe there's a couple reasons. There's a couple reasons to see me want to play, but rebounds is not one of them. So if you're looking at a rebounding, you know, a rebounding driven guy, or you want to get some extra peripherals out of someone really makes sense to look at this chart uh, as well. Um, so this is an interesting way to expand your DVP understanding of a matchup. Um, again, the research console is really nice. There's a lot of tools that I like over here, at Roto Grinders, you know, and I think what I like to see people do is get away from the computers. Okay, these are robots. Don't let the robots win, guys. Projections, lineup builders, those are the robots. They're taking over the world, okay? Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but I'm serious. Do your own research. Slide down here. This is where you want to figure out your information. Use this stuff to your advantage, right, rather than just relying on the computers because these are driven by algorithms, and they're really – very solid because there's really solid staff over at Roto Grinders, but they're not the end all be all in making lineups. And you should learn how to use the rest of the tools that these pros are using when they're creating these kinds of things. So something to keep in mind, uh, that is a great tool. This offense versus defense tool is a great tool to use um, on a daily basis for me. All right, that is it for me. Find me on Twitter if you have any questions at Hey Mr. Kane. If not, uh, enjoy the video, and I will uh, see you guys next week after the All Star.